down to Bradenton a little bit later this month, and I'm legitimately looking forward to it, if only because there's always something that hits you a little bit differently about the club than whatever it was that you'd been thinking the entire winter. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins in the same place that you found this. Today is the official reporting day for pitchers and catchers. It means next to nothing. The players are required to make some form of contact with the team's traveling secretary at any point between when you're listening to this show and tonight at 11.59 p.m. That's it. There's no media access. There's no fans. There's no real events. But, man, does that get romanticized. Tomorrow, now that's a little different. That's going to have pitchers and catchers out on the field. And it's going to have at least some, you would presume, of the excitement or anticipation that at least the Pirates themselves, meaning management, coaching staff, players, have for this coming season. I don't know exactly why they feel that way. With three known commodities in their starting rotation and an array of other significant question marks, but but they do. And what ends up happening I'm telling you, every time I covered a 105 loss season, this was back in 2010, and that group was just so stoked going in. They were like, yeah, we're going to really take a big step forward and whatever else. And and you're like, okay, um, you all seem very happy about it, so maybe you're right. <laughs> and you end up, to an extent, falling for it. It's not PR. It's not somebody manipulating anything. It's just you're around that energy. You're around that enthusiasm. And the individual players will believe in themselves because that's how they got to where they are, to being in the bigs. And then as a result, they look around at each other and they become buds and they begin believing in each other. And then, of course, you know, April hits. But I do think In this particular camp, you're going to have a lot of meaningful questions answered very, very quickly. Not definitively, but quickly. Example, how's O'Neill Cruz looking? That's going to be what everyone wants to see, hear, and of course read. Does he look like he did before the injury? Is he able to Get down low and underneath the ball on fielding grounders. Can he run the bases? Have you seen him slide? Are they working with him on special ways to slide? Big, big issue. Marco Gonzalez is a name that's not going to come up with a whole lot of Pittsburgh fans since he's yet to pitch a game in anger for the Pirates. But he's one of those three starting pitchers, and he's coming in continuing to work to overcome a nerve injury. And that's usually, and I say this delicately, a a death knell for a pitcher's career. They've yet to really figure out ways to regenerate nerves and have pitchers whose arms and shoulders and elbows and everything have to be as healthy as needed if not necessarily pristine, and the nerve thing is just, yeah, I've yet to see anybody completely bounce back from this. I probably should have mentioned that when I counted him among the three known commodities. How about second base? The one position that's probably in the the biggest state of flux, is it Jiwon Bay? Is it Nick Gonzalez? Is it Leo Verpaguero, as I hope it'll be? You'd like to see the one who apparently has the most upside get that job, but you don't know that that's how they're going to play it, and you don't know why they might or might not play it that way. These are things that become evident very quickly. How about right field? Can you even name a right fielder? Okay, you can do Josh Palacios, but they've got other guys in the fold, and they've got other guys that they're taking seriously as possibilities out there. 
I think that's the position at which Ben Charrington can still make the second biggest impact on this roster, the other, of course, being actual starting pitchers. If he were to all of a sudden, out of nowhere, get ambitious and say, well, I really want to add to this team. They're they're very exciting and they're very energized. And I'm starting to feel some of that myself after a winter of hibernation. And I'd like to add a right fielder. That might be where it happens. But I'll say this again, not being down there yet and having had this entire winter to experience what was really, as long as I'm using winter analogies, a four-month groundhog day, really. You just wake up thinking, have the Pirates done something? You go to bed wondering why they didn't. Wake up and do it all over again. The radio is playing I Got You, Babe, and Ben still hasn't gotten anybody. We come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Your front door, your car, your bike, your computer, your gun. Safety is a habit. Every day you lock and secure your home and everything you want to keep safe. Gun safety and responsible storage are no different and the best way to help prevent accidents, misuse, and theft. If you have a firearm, own it, respect it, and secure it. Visit ProjectChildSafe.org. Brought to you by the National Shooting Sports Foundation and the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Today's J1Q comes from Matt in Arizona. Matt asks, DK, even with Yasmani Grandal on the roster, Henry Davis has to catch 75% of this team's games, doesn't he? If the purpose in signing Grandal was to put Davis back in right field half the time, then why draft a catcher at number one overall in the first place? Matt, I don't know that Grandal's acquisition is going to have any impact on Davis. I say this only because every single public pronouncement, whether from Ben Charrington or Derek Shelton, has stated unequivocally, unflinchingly, that Davis is the catcher, that Davis is about to be a catcher, the starting catcher for 2024, that they want to see what he does that they want to give him a full slate of games, not worrying about being pulled from the assignment at the first sign of trouble. And you know what? If this were year four, I'd have no problem with it. If the rest of the roster had been built up appropriately, I'd have no problem with it. If the instruction at hand were of a major league caliber, I'd have no problem with it. But I do have a problem with it because when you get to year five, and this is why I keep pounding this particular subject, that I believe that they would love if this were just another punt year, if this were just another, you know, year 19 of the rebuild for a couple of reasons. They'd buy Paul Skeens some time. They'd buy some other starting pitchers some time. And yeah, they'd buy Henry some too. Maybe Termar Johnson as long as you're at it. So there wouldn't be a three-man competition for second base. There would just be a second baseman. In Henry's case, I feel awkwardly in wording it this way, but I think you have to do it regardless of whatever your aspirations might be for that season. I think you have to ride Henry, no matter what. Because, as you said, he is a 1-1. He is someone who looks like he should have an elite capability to hit. He definitely has an elite arm. 
So what he needs to do is establish some fundamentals, some confidence, and some good communication with the pitching staff. I don't mean to make that sound easy. To paraphrase the one and only Ron Washington, it's incredibly hard. He was talking about first base. But you're still in a spot where you have to mix a lot of, hey, let's go for it, with, hey, we've really got to give this guy a look. That's a strange, strange place for this team to be in year five. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. We'll do another one of these tomorrow.